Hey everyone, welcome back. So at the end of the last video, we kind of talked about naming our flows and, and we uh, had previously set up the start um, element for our record trigger flow here. In this video, we're gonna take the next step and we are going to build what needs to uh, happen in the flow. And that is that we're gonna update the opportunity um, by mapping the potential value field and having that field set the amount field on the opportunity. So we're in the auto layout here and I'm gonna change this to the freeform layout just so we can get that uh, look at all the elements over here. And right away, one of the first things you'll probably notice is that the elements are fewer when we are in a record trigger flow. You know, primarily missing is the screen flow and the um, actions. So there were some actions in the screen flow that kind of show up at the top. Additionally, you might notice that the data elements, there's two fewer ones. Looks like we're missing the delete, we're missing the create, and then we're missing uh, the rollback records. I don't know if the rollback records actually shows up in a screen flow, but um, it's not available here. And the reason for that is that when we configured our flow, we chose it to be a before save flow. So this is something else that you would wanna know if you got an interview question, or if um, you know it was like, if you needed to do something in Salesforce for building a flow, is that you get fewer data elements when you're doing a before save flow. Just to show you that, if I go back here and select, select actions in related records where we optimize the flow in the start element and I press done, you see that um, we actually do get an action, the ability to call subflows, and we get our uh, create and delete records back. So just be aware of that. And in case you were wondering why that is, uh, it's because we chose the before save flow. So I'm gonna press done and we'll go back to our more limited set of elements. And the reason that uh, there's fewer elements is because all of the operations in a before save flow happen earlier in the order of execution. And these are uh, the only operations supported during that phase of execution. So with all that said, let's now configure how we would update our flow. There's, there's two ways to do this. One, as you might guess, is just to drag an update records to the canvas and use that to update the opportunity. And if you were thinking that, then you're exactly right. And your uh, learning from the ScreenFlow videos was spot on. Uh, the second thing, and the way that we're actually gonna do it here, is we're gonna use an assignment element. And this is something that's also unique to be for save flows. So I'm gonna drag an assignment element to the canvas. And we haven't worked with one yet, so we'll spend some time kind of talking about what it does. But an assignment, short and simple, lets us set variable values. So a variable could be anything in the flow. We could make a custom variable for like a number or a text value, or we could even use an existing variable, something like the uh, uh, record that kicked off a flow. So that's what we're gonna do here. And if you didn't fully catch or understand that, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna learn this a little bit by doing and a little bit by explaining it. I'm gonna name this um, set amount field to potential value. And again, I just want to highlight that having descriptive names does not only apply to your, your flow name itself, it also applies to elements within the flow. Uh, over your flow career, you're going to build maybe hundreds and maybe thousands of flows, and you're not necessarily going to be the one that's going to be maintaining them long term. You know, you might get promoted or hired at another company, and um, you know, that may also happen to other people that you work with who built flows before you. So as an admin, when you come into a flow for the first time, Having all the elements have clear names makes it really easy for you to understand what's going on quickly, which allows you to make updates quickly, which lowers the amount of time it takes uh, to do development. So that was a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> but um, other than the name, the assignment lets us set variable values. And that's what we're going to do next by um, choosing which variable we want to set. So let me click the variables here and we'll see what the options are. You see that we have uh, the option to create a new variable if we want to, but we also have what are called global variables. And these are variables that the flow will automatically provide us um, depending what type of flow we're in. So because we're in a record triggered flow, Salesforce will create a variable every time that represents the record that triggered the flow. And so you can see we have this global variable here called our record has a money sign in front of it, record, and then it says the object name that we're working with. 
And so this represents the current record, and that's um, that's how I've always interpreted the money sign, is like that's the current record. That's the one that we're currently working with. And when we click this open, you can see that every field that is available on an opportunity shows up in a list here. And so what we can do is we can pick a field. In this case, we'll pick the amount field. And so that's our variable. We used a global record variable to um, choose the amount variable, which is also a field, so the amount field. And then we're going to use an operator called equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the amount field equal to a different value. And that value is also going to be a variable. So we can click the values here. And you see that our list of global variables expands. And we'll probably get experience with the rest of these as we go throughout the course. But uh, that same record opportunity variable, global variable, is present again. And uh, just as a reminder, this is uh, generated by Salesforce, and it represents the current opportunity that we're working with. And so it will allow us to click the global variable for the opportunity. And then it allows us to scroll down and choose a different field. In this case, we'll choose the potential value field. And so now we're saying, like this assignment, you could think of it as we're actually assigning the value, uh, a new value to the amount field. And the assignment we're making is that we're setting or assigning the amount to be equal to the potential value. And we're going to press done. Then we'll connect our start element to our assignment and we'll press save. And so this is unique to before save flows as well, where the assignment can be used to set a field value. In an after save flow, you can use assignments to set field values, but you also need to use an update records element to save those values um, or save those changes to the database. With a before save flow, you can just assign it and be done. And that's all we need to do for this flow. That's all, you know, the, the flow will kick off and we're going to trigger it when an opportunity record is created and we'll make that assignment or that field update and then we're done. So I saved the flow and I pressed activate and our flow is now active. So in the next video, we will convert a lead to an opportunity and see if it worked.